Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Ada J. Author New User Workshop. This is Jessica Frank with the Center for Access to Justice and Technology at Chicago Kent. Today's topic is Ada J. Guided Interviews in Ada J. Author 5, how to make one, how to convert one, and where to go for help. So the basic idea today is that we are getting very close to having A to J Author 5.0 up on Law Help Interactive so that it can be used by the community. We're in the last stages, hopefully, of our internal testing with the LHI technical team and a little bit of friends and family testing with a small number of community testers and hoping to open it up to the larger development community so that you can start testing and flagging things for us shortly. Keep an eye out on the list for uh, posts from Claudia or Miranda from LHI or from me saying that it is live on LHI and that you can start using it and testing it on their uh, development server. So our agenda today, we're going to talk about accessing A to J Author 5.0. So if you don't know where to find it, where can you find it? We'll talk about basic question design, just kind of how to even make questions in A to J 5. A little bit about logic and how to convert a 4 to 5. And then we'll talk about additional resources, particularly those those of you that are new authors or have never done this before, um, or those of you that are that worked in A to J 4 a couple of years ago and are coming back to it as well. So first, how do you get to A to J Author? So we are now, A to J Author 5 is completely web-based. You author on our website. There's nothing for you to download, and it can run in any modern browser. You go to a to j author org. We recently updated our website a couple of months, uh, right around the beginning of the year. So it may look different if it's been a few months since you looked at it but um, your accounts are still the same if you had access on uh, A to J Author in, within the last year. If you don't have access or you forget your password, you can always shoot me an email or webmaster at adajauthor.org, and we can sort out any login issues you have. So our new website, um, www.adajauthor.org, and you can look through everything. It's not password protected at all, except the point at which you want to author guided interviews. So you can go through the Learn tab, which includes a bunch of resources that uh, we'll talk about later. The events, see where we're talking. You can learn about A to J Author. Our homepage has a general explanation and a slideshow of different interesting things that we think um, you should see. It has our Twitter feed as well, um, if you're interested in current news about us and the legal tech community. Once you log in on the author, you, cl you click the author tab at the top here, and it will take you to a screen where you can either log in, or if you are already logged in, it will take you to a screen that says Run A to J Author. When you click that link, you'll be taken into the authoring software, which is this. To create new interviews, you start always on this first screen. This is the interview tab. From here, you can start a blank guided interview at the top. You can open ones you've already created under the edit one of my interviews section, or you can look at sample guided interviews, which are at the end um, under edit one of my interviews. You can also here upload your A to J guided interviews, either five or four, and convert them to five or work on them as well. We'll talk about how to convert in a few minutes. Here's the navigation tabs. They should look fairly familiar to anyone who's used A to J Author 4, but we have a couple additions, including the All Logic page and the All Text page. Both of those, um, the All Logic page shows all of the logic and advanced conditions that are running in your guide interview and are editable so that you can make changes and fix your logic right there on the spot instead of having to dig through questions. All text page is similar. It shows all the text for all of your questions. And you can make edits to it right there. It's searchable using your browser's Control F feature or um, however you search using your browser's tools. And you can make changes right there. Like if you spell judgment wrong or uh, plaintiff, that kind of thing, you can make all those changes without digging through the questions. To create new questions, once you're in, here I'm in a blank guided interview. A blank guided interview comes preloaded with four questions. To add more, you click new at the bottom, or you can clone existing pages as well. When you double click on a question, or click the edit button with the question highlighted, the question design window pops up. This is where you're gonna do 99% of your work in a guided interview. If you want more information, because I'm kind of going fast, through this, you, we have specific training materials for how to design questions if you're brand new. 
Within the question design window, there is the page, page information section, which is where you designate the step, the question name, and any notes that you want to leave about this question. The step, for those of you that don't know, is kind of the big outline header. So you can have up to 12 steps, and they guide your end user through the big picture issues. The question names themselves are visible to the end user. So your question names should be something like one dash introduction or explain a little bit at least to your end user about what question they're on. Give them a little bit of context. In the question design window, you can also edit the question text, add audio here, and learn more. The text box itself, once you click into the question text area, allows you to embolden, italicize, add hyperlinks, or pop up. We also have indenting on here. It's not showed up on this uh, screenshot. You can indent within the question as well. This allows you to edit the text of your question. If you kept scrolling in the question design window, you would see the learn, learn more question prompt, the learn more answer. So the prompt is what the end user thinks, the little bubble over the end user avatar's head. The learn more answer or the help is what the guide replies to the end user's question when the end user clicks learn more. You can either have that as text, graphic, or video. So the help style, can, you would select either text, show me graphic, or show me video. If you selected show me graphic or show me video, a little yellow window would pop up and you would be able to upload files, similar to the blue upload buttons that are under text audio and help audio. You can add audio to the question of your text and to the help itself so that if your end users are visually um, impaired that they have the audio there running along to help them. This section is also where you put the counting variable if you are doing a repeat loop. We have a whole separate training on repeat loops that you can find on our YouTube channel if you want more information on that. Here's an example of a learn more. The question, the end, the guide avatar says, in what county are you to file this petition? Gives a list. The end user thinks, where should I file this petition? They, they don't know which one to pick. They clicked learn more, then they would be given um, more help that you put in to help them answer that question. Here's an example of show me graphic and show me video. The video I have here is kind of far away and small. I didn't optimize it for the show me graphic or the show me video, but you can have a, a video here that plays and you can also have a graphic here as well, similar to how you could in A to J Author 4. The ways to gather information from your end user, uh, one of them is fields. Fields allow your end user to tell you things, to type something in. We have uh, multiple, you can have multiple fields. You can add and delete fields. The field type, which we'll talk about in a second. The field label, what variable is associated with this field, whether it's required or not. And if they don't answer it and it is required, what do you want the guy to interview to say? You can have it say something like, you must fill in your social security number to move forward. Or you can just have a default a reply that says you must answer this question before you can move on. The label is what appears before the field in the question text. The default value, you can assign it something like if this form is meant to be used only in Florida. You can set the default value for the end user state to Florida and it will automatically populate with that unless they change it. You can limit value ranges for numbers. So if you want to limit the date of birth, the maximum that ever shows as 1900, uh, 1914, anything like that, you can limit it. You can also have the minimum to something like 2014 or today to make sure that they can't pick any date in the future if you use today. You can show a calendar. You can also show a calculator for numbers. And you can require the end user to fill in an answer. And then I skipped one. You can include lists. You can either make a new list with the internal list or you can upload external XML lists. For example, the usstates.xml is a file we have um, on the website that includes all of the state names in alphabetical order with their two-letter abbreviations and so that you don't have to type in all 50 states. We already made it and they're already in order for you. So you can include that and upload it as well. There are nine different field types. Field types are the format that the end user sees or inputs the information. So it can be text, number, date, gender, radio buttons, or check boxes. 
The numbers can be formatted differently if the number is a zip code or social security number or a dollar. You can have text long, text picked from a list, or plain small text shown here. This is an example of the date where it will um, include the calendar for you and the end user can select from the calendar. This is a sample um, text pick from a list, so you can your end user can choose the option that's appropriate for them. You could also ask this kind of question as a radio button as well, or a checkbox. The other way to gather information from your end user is with buttons. So you can, uh, if you kept scrolling in the question design window, you would get to the button section. On the button section, you can add and delete buttons, you can set value, or you can set variables and the value uh, based on a button click, and you direct your end user based on where you set the destination of this button. So if the question is, do you have children, and they answer yes, the destination would then be questions asking them about their children. If they say no, the destination question should be beyond the children questions, because they don't need to be asked children about their children, and you would change the destination there. New questions by default only have the continue button, but you can have up to three buttons. They can be labeled however you'd like. It doesn't have to be yes, no, or one word answers. It can be things like yes, no, or we're pregnant. And you can use buttons instead of fields for questions with three options or less, or anything that doesn't require your end user to type in an answer. A button can assign a value to a variable, so if they clicked, do you have children? They clicked yes. You could set the variable have children tf, true false, to true. They clicked no. You could set that same variable have children tf to false if you use that later on in your hot docs or um, some other place to test logic on that. You can also, like I mentioned, move ahead with branching through the destinations. And this is also where you set or increment a counting variable for the repeat loop. Again, repeat loops are beyond the scope of this training, but we have specific training materials on our website and a YouTube video on repeat loops. When you click the destination button, a list will pop up with all of the options, all of the questions that you could de designate your end user to go to. There's ones that are special branching, which are A to J specific. You didn't create them. They come by default with an A to J guided interview, like success process form which is the very last button destination you should ever set, that takes the end user to the server to either compile with hot docs or go into your case management system. There are exiting options. We have a special training on our YouTube channel as well on, on exiting and how you can use the different save and resume or exit to another website uh, options for your end user. Finally, in the overview, kind of of this section, we'll talk about the map. The map is basically, it's a legal concept mapping for your guided interview. It shows the flow of the entire guided interview in one place. So you can see the forest kind of for the trees here. Instead of being tied down in, in each specific question, you can see where that question fits in the grander scheme. You can zoom in to see specific sections and how they flow, and you can fit the entire guided interview in one screen, so it lets you see the big picture. The logic section is a little bit different than in 4.0. So in 4.0, it was, it was on the advanced tab within the question design window that you worked. Now you scroll to the end of the question design window, and there's an advanced logic section. You can script your own conditions in an open logic text box, rather than having to use the plus button and different little boxes that we had in A to J4. You type into this blank logic text your logic expressions, either in the before box if you want the logic to be tested before the question is displayed, or you type in the after box if you want it to display the question to the end user and then test the logic. Here is how to actually script logic if you've never done it, and it's not as scary um, as it may seem. Just break it down by parts. So you always start with an if, and you always end with an end if. You need that the two caps of a logic statement in order for it to run properly. The commands, there's only five, if, else, end if, set, and go to. Those are the only five commands that you can use with an A to J author that will get you uh, through everything you need to do in, in advanced logic. Always put your variables in brackets, no matter what. 
put your question destination, so for a go-to and the name of the question, put that in quotes. Put any values that you want to set, so like set uh, end user county to whatever, put that, that, that value in parentheses, or in quotes. And start each new command with a new hard, a new line, so hard return, hit the enter button on your keyboard. So if should be on its own line, else should be on its own line, and if should be on its own line, same for set and go to. Each of those needs to be on its own line. So uh, one of the ways a condition can be used is to set a value for a variable. So in this example, I'm testing whether the number of children the user has entered is greater than one. So if number child nu, which is the, var the variable that holds the value the end user has told me they have when I ask the question, how many children do you have? That is greater than one. Set a new variable, child or children te, a text variable, to the word children. Else, so if it is, uh, if it is less than one, or equal to one, set child or children TE to child. So if they have one child, set it to child. If they have more than one child, set that same variable to children. Then I can use that child or children TE later in another question to say, um, what is the name of your children's father? Or where do your children live? Rather than saying, where does your child slash children live? Here, they've, told, they've already told me how many kids they have, so I'm going to personalize their guided interview further by using the correct, the correct noun. The second way to use logic is with conditional branching. So A to J author routes the user to a certain question based on information they've entered. So if, in this example, if their date of birth converted to an age, using the age function, is less than 18, I want to take them to a page that says, I'm sorry, you don't qualify because you're too young. You can only use this form if you are over 18. Otherwise, else, go to whatever the next question is. In this case, it's to dash notice date and always end if. So here, if the end user enters their birth date and it indicates that they are under 18, they're taken to a sorry, you don't qualify question. If they're over 18, they're moved on and I don't actually have to ask them two questions. I don't have to ask them their birth date and then if they're over 18. Or I don't have to ask them if they're over 18 first and then later on if they are over 18, ask them for their birthday. It's one less question for your, six, your end users that are meant to fill out this form to actually have to fill out. Again, making it easier for your end user using simple back-end logic that you can work through and create. Conditions are evaluated in the order in which they are listed. If your condition is to leave, the A to J author will not evaluate the rest of the condition. So make sure that your, your conditions, you have them in the order in which you'd like them to be tested from top to bottom. And each condition, as you can see here, I have three different conditions. Each one has an if and an end if. I could also have combined these three conditions into two conditions using an else. So if their income is greater than 35,000, set income too high to true, and go to a different question, else, if their income is less than 35,000, go to, uh, or set their income to false, and it would branch according to however you'd set the destination button. And then another condition that says, if their income is between 35,000 and 25,000, go to a follow-up question that then would uh, presumably ask them about any deductions or expenses to take down that number. So you can combine your logic if it's based on the same if. In the first example, the same if is controlling set and go to. Or you can use the word and um, and use one line of the if to test. Any questions on logic before we move on to um, converting from four to five? Oh, I see a question. Eric, I will unmute you. Go ahead, Eric. Hello. Hi. Um, thank you. Uh, Earlier you said values in quotes, but I see in your example if the income new is less than 35,000, is that 35,000 not a value? And then also on the set, the TF to true, do true and false, those aren't values that need quotes? I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I know. Oh, you're right. Actually, that is working. Um, yes, it is a value. The if line doesn't, when it's evaluating it, it doesn't need the quotes. Sorry about that, I should have clarified. 
and um, true and false don't need quotes. Apparently, sorry about that. Um, if you're setting it to something that is more than one word, I would make sure to put quotes in. Contains basically the whole thing that you want set as the value. So just to be on the safe side, I would put quotes around everything. It's, this is a bad example. Sorry about that. So to be safe, put quotes. Just like to be safe, put brackets around your variables. You actually only need brackets around your variables if there are more than one word, but just as a policy, you should use it all the time. Sorry about this example. Thank you, Eric, for pointing that out. So how to convert from four to five. It's actually super easy. Things to note, though, you can only convert forward. You cannot take a five and backwards convert it to a four. Your four file would still exist, so even after you convert a four to five, it basically just creates a new file that is a five. So if you did want to work on your four in your downloaded version of A to J author four, you still could. You just can't work on a file that has been converted to a five and rebring that into A to J author four. So this is my interviews tab. I've logged into a to jauthor.org, hit the run a to j button, and I'm taken into the author into this interviews tab. At the very bottom, there is a button called Upload A to J Guide to Interview. When you click it, it will pop up a folder um, that lets you search within your computer, and you can find that .a to j file. Click Upload, and it will pull it into the list of your existing guide to interviews. You may need to refresh your browser to make sure that it's taken to your list, but then you can search either by the name of your interview or by the date that you uploaded it using Control F to search your browser. And that's it, and you have a five, and it's converted. Then you need to test it. Most of the problems that are going to show up have shown up in the logic section. So the conversion process is with A to J author five is stricter in logic. Four, we let a, um, our code let a lot of scripting errors pass and still ran properly and still evaluated your conditions properly. A to J5 in HTML and jQuery does not allow that. Things like you didn't close a parentheses or you didn't have proper pr uh, brackets around your, your question or you used a funny character, things like that will now show up as red and your logic box will be red knowing you have an error. There's an FAQ on our website, which you can see here, that has common logic errors that we found and their fixes. Um, ones that have popped up recently that aren't on FAQ is null, and uh, or null doesn't work right now. If you set a value to, to null, it's not working properly, but we are working on that to fix it in five. And if you have true or false with different, like if you have true all in caps, but you have false in lowercase, um, it's not working properly. So just make sure that you are true or false right now or in lowercase, that works properly. Um, but also something we are working on, fixing. We'll update the FAQs with anything that pops up that we've seen a lot in community testing, but you can always check out this page. You can go from our homepage directly into the FAQ section, or you can follow this URL. And I'll put, uh, these slides will be up on our YouTube channel as well so that you can, will be able to see them. Finally, test, test, test. So like I, so not just A to J5 is stricter, Hot Docs 11 on the LHI server is stricter as well. Your variable names cannot be more than 50 characters. A to J5 will throw up an error message in preview indicating that your variable, your hot dogs variable name exceeds 50 characters and then you have, it, it warns you, it doesn't stop you from setting it, but it warns you that so at least you know where that's happening. But hot dogs 11 doesn't allow more than 50 characters in a name. So think about that when you set different, when you create different variables. So make sure to test your repeat loops, test your logic, test any special exiting that you've seen, Always make sure that your variable types, not just the name of the variable, the variable type has to match between A to J and hot dogs. So if it is a text, it's not enough to just call it end user first name TE. The variable type actually has to be text in both A to J and hot dogs. Otherwise, hot dogs will, will reject the answer file and not generate a document. Uh, another error that's come up with the new hot dogs 11 and A to J 5, also A to J 4, is making sure that your true-false variable actually comes out as a true or false, not something like end user has children TF being set in your logic in A to J to something like five 
or John. We had end or we had authors who were setting true false variables to something other than true or false, and it's causing a document doesn't generate error in Hot Docs. Also, make sure your XML lists are still working. You need to re-upload any attached XMLs that you had to A to J5. So if your four had list of states, um, had list of counties, that kind of thing, you need to reattach them basically in the proper spots in your A to J5. As always, test, 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 run through. If you have issues, feel free to email me, send me your uh, .A to J files, and I can look at them in my own uh, version of A to J. I've had questions about sharing um, and working on A to J5s with multiple people. Right now, the way that you do it is similar to the way is the same, basically, as the way you did it as in 4. You each have a local copy, basically. Your local copy now exists in your web-based account on a to j author.org. But if you want to share to work with it, with it with a partner, you need to download a copy of, a to, of your a to j 5 file and email it or however else you share it with your partner and they have to upload it into their account and it's then their local copy. Um, you can also have a shared account where you both have the password and the username and work on it in one account. So those are the two options right now. There's no Google Drive-esque sharing feature yet. So new author resources that we have, here's a screenshot of our Learn tab on our website. There's our authoring guide, specifically highlighted is our new author resources section, also our training video library, frequently asked questions, information about A to J4, including the authoring guide and all kinds of other information, and then our online classroom as well. The authoring guide is the equivalent of 190 pages of fun. It has detailed descriptions of every tab and its functionality, tips on how to use the different features, detailed instructions, and screenshots for scripting logic, how to create repeat loops with screenshots, and uh, different appendices, including naming conventions and other community standards. It's all been updated for A to J Author 5, and it's web-based now, so it, it, any changes are um, instantly reflected in it as well. We have two how-to guides to help you if you're new to this process for storyboarding and how to start a hot docs component of the uh, automation process. And we have our frequently asked questions section that I mentioned, which is a to j author.org slash FAQs. You can also find it on our homepage or on that learn tab as well. There are 42 videos on how to automate documents on our YouTube channel. We have 27 for A to J4, for those of you that are still working in that. We have seven, actually, on Hot Docs, including basic and advanced Hot Docs. We made those for our A to J author uh, schools, and we've shared them with you guys uh, as a training resource. And there are eight on A to J author 5. When I post this video in the next week or so, it will be nine. And then we have a sample exercise that I created to teach you how to automate a document in Hot Docs 11 and A to J Author 5. And with our students testing it, they learned how to do both in about an hour. So um, you can find it on that new author resources page under the Learn tab, or you can follow this URL to go to that new author resources page as well. And it's called the Sample A to J Author and Hot Docs Exercise. As I mentioned, we'll be transitioning soon to A to J5 on the LHI server, so you can get started right now updating your A to J guided interviews from 4 to 5 and working through any of the logic issues or changes that you want to make before you can load it on the LHI server. Um, it'll be good if you get started on that so that you're not, um, so that once we get the community environment open on LHI, you can start testing and raising any issues for us as well. And any time that you're working in A to J and you have questions, my email is here. Just send me your .a to j file, which you can get on the Publish tab uh, within the software. And let me know what browser you're using or what OS. There's also a Contact Us with Technical Problems web form on our website as well under the About section. So you can send that to us as well. Thank you all for coming and attending today, and I will see you next month with our next training. Thank you.